वेलकम टू माई व्यूज एंड न्यूज फ्राइडेज फर्स्ट वीडियो फर्स्ट न्यू स्टोरी इज अबाउट इथियोपियन मिनिस्टर टैकल उमा बांति इट वॉज बिंग रोमर्ड दैट हिज फादर हैड बिन किडनेप्ड बाय रोमो लिबरेशन आर्मी टैकल उमा बांति स्पोक यस्टरडे थ्रू हिज सोशल मीडिया अकाउंट ही टॉक्ट अबाउट हिज फादर वट डिड ही से सेकेंडली Eritrea where an American citizen who went to Eritrea 3 years ago to bring about a change in Eritrea and was put in prison has managed to escape from one of the uh, most secure prisons in Eritrea who is he and thirdly Tigray fighters uh, have withdrawn from several fronts uh, yesterday some pictures videos were shared last night rather of tigray fighters uh, withdrawing from some fronts the so question is uh, only tigray fighters were shown by uh, tigray state media where are their heavy weapons if they are withdrawing from Uh, battle fronts obviously they were armed there with tanks artillery pieces we did not see any heavy weapons when tigray forces tigray fighters were seen withdrawing uh firstly viewers uh, ethiopian minister takele umma banti spoke a few hours ago through his uh, social media account he tried to clarify the rumors about his father's abduction for the past 3 days it is being rumored that uh, takale uma banti's father had been abducted by the fighters of romo liberation army ola what did he say uh the minister said my father is a farmer still working on his farm so indirectly he rejected the rumors that uh, his father had been kidnapped by romo liberation army but can we say that this explanation is uh, satisfactory we don't know because some people close to ola still maintain that uh, takale uma banti's father was abducted later released uh a few weeks ago i shared with you news about another ethiopian minister darej doguma minister of health his father had been abducted by some groups in oromia probably oromo liberation army the minister never confirmed the abduction but his father was released after paying a ransom then alamo seme uh, oromia prosperity party top official was attacked by ola fighters just 3 uh, to 4 days ago but he survived so it is happening that uh, top government officials in oromia are the targets uh, for oromo liberation army their families are targets to their family members are abducted ola denies ola never uh, confirms it never admits that uh, the group is involved in kidnapping for ransom the group is involved in abductions of uh, pp a party official their family member what is happening uh, uh, reportedly uh secondly viewers uh, an eritrean who is a us a citizen went to eritrea from us in 2019 maybe he wanted to bring about a change there through forming and through uh uh launching a movement underground movement against the government samuel welle a uh, few years ago a top eritrean journal was beaten his name is uh, afram uh, and uh, he was beaten uh, by some unknown people sabat afram sabat afram was beaten i think in his house by some unknown attackers and he remained partially paralyzed for some time 
Samuel Valde was accused of beating uh, Sabbath Afra. He tried to organize a movement against error in government, but he was arrested. He was put in prison. And last time, uh, the last prison which he was uh, sent to is Karchali prison, which is seen as the most secure, some say the worst prison in Erati. Samuel Valde has managed to escape this prison. He is out of Erertia. He is not in Erertia. He is receiving medical aid. He is receiving uh, treatment. Uh, and he is in the US mostly. It is being said. This is from Seattle, US. How did he manage to escape one of the most secure, tightly guarded prisons in Erertia? It's another story. Even in coming days, he will uh, be... Uh, he'll be interviewed and they'll, he'll share details uh, how he escaped. But he is out of error here. So he's one of the very few cases uh, when people manage to escape from a uh, prison in error here, especially from this prison, which is one of the very tightly guarded prisons in error here. A third words, a Tegarai fighters are withdrawing from battlefronts. Uh, last night, uh, DWTV, Tegarai TV shared images of Tegarai fighters withdrawing from some fronts. And uh, Tegarai's regional state media has shared some names of fronts from where uh, Tegarai fighters have withdrawn. Mekantal, Zalambasa, Churcher, Nabalat, Abergale. Uh, Bariteklai, uh, Higumbarda, and some others. Almost seven fronts from where uh, Tigray fighters have withdrawn. The fronts are in central Tigray, in uh, northern Tigray, in southern Tigray. So, where are they going now? They are being put in camps. Uh, most say they are heading towards some camps in Makale, Tigray. It's not clear. They are withdrawing from battlefronts. Where are their heavy weapons? If Tegarai forces were deployed to all these fronts, where they were, obviously they were armed there. They were armed with tanks, artillery pieces, MLRs. Where are those tanks, artillery pieces? Uh, because uh, uh, regional state media only showed uh, Tegarai fighters. Uh, they were boarding some trucks and they were seen leaving. But no heavy weapons were shown. They were not seen in videos. So it means that heavy weapons have been collected. Where are they? Uh, has Tegarai uh, region handed over the heavy weapons to Ethiopian federal government? Uh, partially, the heavy weapons have been handed over. As I reported uh, three days ago, uh, that uh, the regional government uh, has handed over some of its arsenal of heavy weapons to Ethiopian National Defense Force. Yes, there could be some still in the custody of uh, Tegadai forces, but uh, reportedly some have been handed over in uh, the areas close to Mihoni. Secondly, meetings have been held in Shire two days ago. To finalize uh, preparation, to finalize a plan for disarming uh, reintegration of Tegra fighters. The meetings were about disarming and surrender of small weapons, light arms, not heavy weapons. Because the Kenya uh, declaration between Tadasa Varade and Bano Jula signed around two weeks ago is very clear. Technical committee, which is meeting in Shire, is focusing on surrendering of light arms and uh, reintegration of Tegaraya fighters uh, into some departments, civilian or forces, or they can lead civilian lives too. So, most probably heavy weapons have been surrendered and that is what we uh, have learned from some sources, uh, maybe partially. 
uh, and gradually light arms will be surrendered to but not to ENDF but to Tigray regional government. Uh, light arms will remain in Tigray uh, according to the needs of Tigray regional government. And then these light arms will be distributed to Tigray police, Tigray forces which are in the making. Tigray police is being formed. Tigray regional police will be formed uh, which will be armed obviously. It will take some time. This disarmament, demobilization, reintegration will take some time and money as well. Uh, Ethiopia needs money. Who will uh, fund this project? Maybe US and EU. Uh, and it would need uh, several hundred million US dollars. So, US and EU are emerging as key uh, backers of this deal. Uh, TPLF has managed to survive as a political entity uh, because of this uh, uh, agreement in South Africa, in uh, then one in Kenya. Overall, uh, I think uh, what is happening should be encouraged. Peace is uh, returning to Tigray. People have suffered a lot. Disconnect between Tigray diaspora and uh, people in Tigray should be bridged. Tigray diaspora has not suffered. Yes, some might have their family members, their relatives in Tigray and they were out of touch. Some have been killed too. They suffered emotionally, but people in Tigray know what suffering is. Uh, they were without food, without uh, health care. So, peace should return to Tigray. Uh, they fought, they fought for two years, but things could not be resolved. TPLF made mistakes, which we'll discuss in some separate videos. But gradually, I think peace is returning and this uh, whatever is happening should be backed. It is in accordance with what has been already agreed between the parties in Pretoria and in Nairobi, Kenya. Thank you much. በመሰረተ ተስምም ሰራዊት ትግራይ ከመስመራት ዛላም በሳ ማይቀነጣል ነበለት ጨርጨር በርታክላይ ህጉም ብርዳን አበርገለን